Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video, the full note for note lesson of the Master Virtuosic Speed Kills No Boundaries by legendary Michael Angelo Badio. Here we go. <music> Alright, this was the lesson of the month for the voting in February and first I have to say sorry that I'm a little bit late. We have now March doing this kind of lesson here. I have some projects going on which cost me right now a little bit, little bit more time than usual and so I have to focus on that a little bit more. Maybe I can tell you more about it in the future but right now I'm not able to talk about that, but more videos will come, for sure, on a more regular basis. But now today is the time for the Speed Kills lesson, note for note lesson from Michael Angelo Badio, yes! And there's nothing more else to say, watch my cover, leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave a comment if you like this video. If you want the free tabs for this video, then go check the description box, there you will find the little download link where you can download those tabs. So yeah, and so much for that, and now let's learn, practice and master Speed Kills by Michelangelo Badio. So we are starting off with the D minor arpeggio, and basically overall we are in the D minor scale, I would say 80% of the song. So learn your D minor scale and you will be ready for the song. But first off we are starting with the D minor arpeggio, this 5 string sweep arpeggio. Hammering and then sweeping from the A string to the E string. Oh, sorry. And then we have this little melody here. Pretty easy. <laughs> it's still easy. It's the easiest part of the song. Right, this is the first section, let me play this one again to warm up a little bit because I'm not in warm up right now. <laughs> Which I will regret later thinking about it. <laughs> Here we have a pretty pretty cool movement through the scale with a little bit of pentatonic idea about adding the 9. So this is a pretty cool example for mixing pentatonic with some of the diatonic notes. Alright, then we move on. First we have this little melody which creates pretty pretty cool tension and build up, starting off with the low G string and sliding into the 10th fret, 9th fret. Going through the D minor scale in this position. And then we have the A7, the A dominant kind of chord underneath the next section. And over it we are playing a diminished chord, B flat diminished for example. And we are sweeping it, doing this uh, classical traditional Ingvi sweep. But Ingvi is not sweeping. And the cool thing about diminished arpeggios, and we will see this later on, they are symmetrical. So we can move them and the inversion of it, three frets higher, it's the same fingering but everything three frets higher. Then we are resolving to the E, which bends into the F, the minor third of the D. Then we have kind of a little reprise of the melody from the intro with a little bit of variation here and there. Then comes this D9 idea, you know, the polis kind of chord kind of idea. Um, but here in D, and we're starting from the 9 to the minor third with our pinky and resolving back to the 9 with our ring finger. 
because we need our pinky to go to the D, now two octaves higher here on the B string, to play this melody. Oh, sorry. Then we play this melody again. Sorry. Now comes the first picking section, the first fast part of this song. And slow it goes like this. Alright, we are still in the D minor scale and we're starting off with this kind of Paul Gilbert idea. We're playing this one three times and then resolving back to the E. And for the pick slanting, pick slanting is really really important here. We have upward pick slanting and then downward for that one note on the E string. So we have up, down, up, down, up. Then we're playing the Pepsi Lick, how I like to call it, from Winnie Moore. And here we have to change again between upward and downward pick sending. Upward, downward, upward, downward, upward, downward. Yeah, really tricky is the transition from this fingering to hit here the 22nd fret, uh, fret on the E string. Uh, I sometimes only hit the 21 or the 23rd. The frets are so minimal here, but it's important to practice this and I practice this like this. Oh, sorry, this was wrong for example. Yeah, and again. So I try to focus on my target note and to land on that note really, really precise. And then we are again playing the first section or the first part of the Pepsi lick. And the Pepsi lick easily consists out of going one square, a scale fragment higher, then again low, one low, and one higher again. Now we are repeating this one here, playing the octave, then we're going one scale position lower, and playing up to the E string. Sorry? Three note per string scale. Then we are playing it uh, ascending again, the three note per string scale. Then, then again, we are playing on the D string, going the next uh, scale position that we know so far. You know the octave from this one here. Going one fret, uh, going one string higher, and another string higher, and resolving to the A. Then comes this little melody. Again. Everything's still in the D minor scale. Pretty easy, pretty simple. You can look it up in the tabs. And then comes the F major section where we're first outlining an F major 7 arpeggio. Sorry. And then adding this little melody. The arpeggio is sweeped. Sorry. So now for the next section, for this little melody here on the lower strings, there are a few different iterations of some people are tabbing it or notating it. Um, some people are saying something like this, but I try to stay in one position so I can go from that F a little bit easier to this F here to restart the arpeggio. Now comes the build-up for the sweep section and 
and I not transcribed the build up note for note. I more kind of created an own version of the build up because it's, because it was really hard to uh, figure out by ear and there are some top tabs out there which seems a little bit yeah wrong um, so I created my own build up in the style of Michelangelo Badio and the build up goes like this <laughs> Okay, the build-up is now in the D Dorian scale, and we're starting off with this kind of three string strings, three three strings, three note per string idea, where we are going three note per strings, but three strings ascending, then going one string below, three ascending, one string below, and again three ascending. This one is not so easy for a right hand because of the nature of uneven number of notes, in this case 9 per sequence, <clears throat> we have to switch with our um, pick direction. So we're first starting off with the down pick, then we're going to the up pick, again down pick, and then moving on. And I practice this like this to be really sure that the first pick of the next string is the right direction. Sorry. Okay, and then comes the variation of a Pepsi lick uh, in D minor. Resolving to the D. Now comes the sweep section. The sweep section in slow goes like this. This is kind of the first section. And up to tempo, it's like this. And so on so on. We're going to the next section right now, but first let us check out the first section. And here first we have a D minor arpeggio, three strings sweep arpeggio. Um, beware of the pull off again, that is from the timing correct. We're playing this one four times. Then we're going to G minor by moving the A to the B flat. Oh, it's not really G minor, sorry, it's more like D minor 6. We're playing this one two times, and then we're going to G minor, this inversion here, 12, 11, 10, 15. Then going back to D minor, D minor 6. Then we're playing this inversion from G minor, and the next inversion from G minor, 15, 15, 15, um, and 18. What we're doing in the D minor section, we're going from that inversion to the big five string inversion, this one here. So we have now the hardest parts here are the jumps from inversion to inversion. So we have to practice this one, for example, from the D minor six to go with our ring finger here to the G. So and be ready for the sweep. Practice this one, high speed up to tempo, but practice only this section here. Only the transition from the D minor 6 to the G, G minor. 
All right, going to the next strip section. The next strip section goes like this. We're first starting off with the G minor arpeggio, the first, the th three string inversion, and then going to five. Then moving on to A minor. Then B flat major. But B flat major only ascending. Because then we're going to uh, C sharp diminished. Moving this one one inversion higher. And go to the next section. Slow again. Sorry. Then we are going to play those. The, then, then comes the next sweep section. Okay, we are using the C sharp diminished arpeggio to modulate into C minor. First off, we are playing C minor. All three string sweeps going to D minor. Going to E flat major and F major. Transforming this one into F sharp diminished. Going one um, one inversion below. And the F sharp diminished goes like this. Two notes on the G string sliding. And then we're playing this melody. Again. F and the diminished. Then comes only playing G minor. Sorry. The big five string sweep arpeggio. Now comes this pretty cool diminished section which goes like this. The cool thing here is we are taking this diminished arpeggio and we're adding one minor third on the high E string and playing around it with our ring finger and pinky so we're creating this kind of melody inside that diminished arpeggio. And first off we're doing this one with um, F sharp diminished. Then we're going to E flat diminished. Then again back high. And now comes the solo section. In the solo section, I improvised. I played uh, the first four bars are in E minor. Then comes F minor. We played some shred licks as well. Then comes G minor, where I do some jazzy chromatical kind of melodic minor stuff and ideas and then comes again the big five string G minor sweep arpeggio um, Michelangelo is in his famous speed kills video of course doing all the open string kind of let me put that away this this stuff uh, first on the E string I'm playing around with the E minor scale. <laughs> I'm not that good in it, I never practice it. Then going to. Um, yeah, what he's doing for the F? That could be interesting. Uh, for the F minor, he's playing mostly some kind of runs, some kind of. Some thought of it like this. And for the G, he is again doing the. This kind of stuff, and then the G minor arpeggio, he's playing it like... <laughs> I can do it, but he's playing this one reverse, which is really, really, really crazy. And now we're going to one of my favorite sections, the neoclassical section. Here we go. First off, a little pickup melody. Where we are decreasing the tempo while playing it. 13, 12, 13, 15, 16, 15, 16, 18. And now comes the neoclassical. First, the half um, half tempo section, half time section. Sorry, um, let me play this one. It 
Sorry. Now you will maybe see some different fingerings for this section and especially the fast section. Um, I figured out a fingering for my own. It's a little bit better for me. You can try to adapt it, but you can also check out some other fingerings, of course. So we are first starting with this G minor. Kind of perpetual, 12, 11, 15. Going to this B flat major. Kind of scale idea. F major. D major, creating the dominant to build up tension to go back to the root. Now we have this chromatical picking idea. Sorry. And again the G minor, going again to D major. Let me play this one again. the fast section. The fast section is or was maybe one of the hardest uh, sections for me to practice and I tell you in a minute why but first let me play this one slow. So now I know that Michael is just using this finger for G minor, but I really don't like this. I'm not the big fan of the picking pattern here, and for me the picking pattern here, playing the D here on the B step, to create this kind of pull-off motion in our left hand, still picked. Um, is a little bit more easier for me. And I know this one from Paganini's Caprice Number no. 5 or Eugene Trickback from Steve Vai because it's the same pattern, the same idea. It's basically a homage on this one. Um, but the original is played in A minor. Yeah. And here now we are in G minor. So after the playing the G minor, uh, sorry. We're going to A diminished and then back here to the B flat and playing the scale ascending starting on the G. Sorry, descending starting on the G. I come to the tempo later on. Let me finish the phrase. After we've played this one three times, we are um, repeating. Sorry. with this kind of pedal note lick. Up to the octave, a little bit of uh, yeah, D Phrygian kind of, D dominant, D Phrygian dominant kind of vibe here to yeah, create this neoclassical kind of tension and resolve it back to the root. Now the difficulty here with the tempo is it, it's not that fast. It's actually too slow. It's a tempo, I think it's around 165 BPM or something like that. It's a tempo for me, which is personally my nemesis tempo, because I'm not really into speed picking motion for my right hand. But I'm still not into... This kind of motion, the slow motion. You see when you are watching my right hand, something is changing when I'm going from slow to high speed. And this is right in between. 
it's like a little like a little border you know between two states where there are no man land and this is for me with the picking and i really have to practice it to get it up to the tempo and the hard then and then there are some few spots in here which are pretty tricky for example the descending scale we're starting basically with the b flat here and going to the g and i tend to play the g always with the downstroke but to be in the kind of constant motion of the picking, it's better to play straight alternate picking so with upstroke. And the um, pedal note lick is especially pretty pretty hard as well on this tempo. Now after that we are going one minor third higher. To, ah no, not one minor third, sorry, we're going one fourth higher to C minor. Basically the same shape, but now in C minor. Eh. And then we are playing some arpeggios in C minor, C minor, D diminished, C minor, and then we are playing B flat diminished. Re um, as a resemblance of G major, G dominant, to create this kind of vibe here. I'm playing again our normal sequence. All right, let's move on to the next section. This one here. <laughs> and this one is pretty hard as well because you need endurance. Endurance in your left and in your right hand. Whew. All right, let me play this one first slow. The cool thing for our left hand, we have basically one pattern. We have this major seven kind of arpeggio, in this case C, major seven arpeggio. And these are also the chords. They are C major, going to E flat major, going to D major, and to B flat major. <laughs> All right. Now, and for our right hand, we have upward pick sending and then downward on the G st and the B string. Upward on the E string and downward on the B string. Up, down. Okay, and then we're moving this one. Pretty easy. Now for this section here of the B flat major, we uh, have an even number of notes per string, two. In this case, we can stay with the um, downward pick sending. And I was talking bullshit. We are starting with downward and then upward. Sorry. Yes, this feels a little bit better than the other way around. Alright, and here we can stay with downward pick sending. Now comes the hard part by playing this one in octaves. The same shape of moving through the arpeggios. For right hand we have to do a lot. We have first 
This kind of idea where we can stay with downward pick sending. And here we are changing to upwards. And can stay uh, upwards until the high E string again and then moving to the next arpeggio. In slow, this sounds and looks pretty easy. But on this one here, it's pretty pretty hard to make this one precise and yeah, feeling natural and being, yeah. Locker on German, what's the English word? Uh, relaxed. Especially the jump, the jump high. This one is pretty, pretty hard as well. And then we're going this through the arpeggios again, and then the last C major is one octave below as well. No, it's not the C. Sorry, I knew it. This was why the reason why I've played it again. It's a D, which where I have one octave below again. Okay, and then comes this pretty cool, uh, I would say, 80s kind of D Dorian. Where I'm improvising as well a little bit, doing some sort of major um, bluesy bands. Then comes the run, which goes like this. Sorry. In the Didorian scale, it's a sequence in thirds. No, no, sorry, not. It's a sequence in fourth. Uh, four notes straight. Uh, four notes. It's, it's a sequence with four notes. Four notes. It's a four note sequence. One, two, three, four, one. The classical going to the D Dorian scale. Starting with B. In major six. Then I move here to an octave higher. And resolving it to the D. And now we're going to the tapping section. And the tapping section is so hard, but it's so awesome. I love this tapping section. I ask myself, why the heck is Michael Angelo always playing this during the tapping section? Ah, the tapping section is so cool. So, so cool and so difficult. It's difficult than this kind of nonsense here, but it's so musical still. The chords of this tapping section, which you only hear in the studio version, are D minor, then B flat major, then G major, then C major, then B flat major, then A major, then D minor, I uh, know, then A flat major and F major. All right, and slow. It goes like this. This one was also pretty pretty hard for my muscle memory because, well, it's easy tapping. It's like the basic Van Halen shape, but it's played through the all of the arpeggios and different inversions on different strings with string skipping and stuff like that. It's ha! Ah, it's really really interesting for our muscle memory. It's really not that easy, but we can take some pretty pretty cool licks out of this, and this is a way how I try to look at this to create cool licks. So, the first one is D minor, a minor arpeggio. Minor, pretty cool tapping arpeggio. Mm -hmm. 
and we're starting off here and going here and I orientate, 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 I see or I look, I focus on my right hand and the left hand is doing muscle memory but I trained the left hand um, solo as well I only I, play, I trained both hand solos for example this shape I trained or and I tried to, to memorize the fingers for my right hand and in combination with the left hand And then B flat major goes like this. So I'd always do this one wrong. Here, for example, I try to figure or try to memorize myself this shape here, and especially for my left hand, the D and the A string, that the index is moving but staying on the same fret. And then we have to move one fret below. Then comes the G major and here we are staying in this position. Going to C major. shape, one octave below, going to the third, and the same shape like the three before that. So we have three times the same shape here, and in between this one here. Then again B flat major is the same shape like the one before. Ah, I always do this one wrong. Then for the A major, we are going, we're starting here on the G string, same shape, same finger, but everything one fret below, because A major is one fret below B flat major. Then we have to do a little bit of a higher jump. And the A flat major, and here we are. Sorry. And this one is especially pretty pretty weird because we have to move a lot with our index finger because we are outlining this shape here. While our pinky stays the same most of the time. Oh, sorry. It only moves here on the A string. While our right hand is outlining this chord here. And yeah, basically, from the speed, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to play. It's more harder to keep tracking of where you are and the memorizing and the muscle memory. So I recommend to train both hands, like this. Sorry. And so on. And then the right hand. Yeah, sorry. This is the last patch over the F. And then comes this line here. And then some Floyd stuff. And yeah, this is basically speed kills. This was the lesson of speed kills. Ooh, and some of the speed here killed me really 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 for sure especially the last three sections were really hard all right so much for speed kills i hope you like this video if you like the video then please like the video and uh, leave a comment subscribe to my channel to see more lessons coming pretty soon so far i wish you a really really great time cheers and stay speedy